Hello my crafty friend, welcome back to another video. This is Bruna Tecality and today I got something new that I never used before and I wanted to share with you guys the process and everything so I'm so happy. I'm all over the place. Excuse my excitement in today's video please because you guys know when I get something new, when I'm doing something new, I get super excited, I cannot stop talking. Yeah, so I got a knitting machine! Oh my goodness, you don't know, I've wanted one of these for a very very long time and it was actually in my basket for a very very long time as well, so I've decided to buy one. So I did. I'm beyond excited for today's video because I really want to try this out. I want to make so many cute little things with it. So in today's video, you'll see the unboxing, me putting it together and it's not a complete unboxing review when you just show the product but I think in my opinion you have to actually do something with it you actually have to use it properly so I'm going to show you how to actually do your very first project because this is also my first time using it if you, it's your first time then you will also be able to make what I'm going to show you if I can make it let's see because you never know what's gonna happen. So this is the knitting machine that I got. This is the Centro knitting machine. If you wanna get it, I'm going to be leaving the link in the description. I got it from Amazon. And this one has 48 needles going around. I'm not sure if this is the largest one. I have tried to look for a larger one, but I couldn't. So I believe this is the largest one. And here is the other side. For what I can see, this is the coolest thing. It has a row counter and I didn't know about it because people were actually complaining that they couldn't really count the rounds. But this one has a row counter, so that is really fun. And then you have the two modes, the panel knitting and the tube knitting. And for what I can see, you get four yarn balls. This is really nice. We can start a project using them. Now let's begin with the unboxing. Ah! Am I the only one excited for this? Hopefully not. <laughs> so now let's open the box. One, two, three. So we got the instructions first. I'm definitely going to be knitting this because I've never used it before, so. So here you have everything you need to know to put it together, to start knitting something. Next thing I can see are the little legs. And then we have some yarn. How fun is this? So I'm going to actually, I thought I was going to actually need to use some of my yarn, but we got some yarn. So maybe I could try make something using this yarn. If it's not enough, then I can add some more but yeah we got four different colors we got purple we got cream we got gray is this like a gray i think it's a gray and then pink this is the weight worsted for what i can see because it's pretty thick so yeah we got some yarn this is 100 acrylic i'm pretty sure and here's the actual knitting machine let's open it up let's let's remove it from the box because I want to start using it. I want to actually make something right now. I'm so excited. Oh, the row counter. How fun. Right here. <laughs> All right, we have to now put it together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the other way. So for what I can see, it's pretty simple. You're just going to be placing the leg into the little holes that you have, the little sections. We have four. Okay, we got the tension as well here. And we also got a screwdriver. How useful is this? Love it. So I'm going to be screwing all of the screws in place. So here's the machine with the little legs and the little feet. And now I just have to attach the tension. Oh my goodness. How do we do that actually? 
do we oh there we go okay that was pretty easy and i was just being dramatic okay <laughs> You can see that here we have the row counter that you can reset it by pressing the little black button. We have the tension. We have the button here, the little switchy thing that you can move down for a tube and then up for the panel. Also, you have a few little things included. So we have three knitting needles. We have a large one, medium and a small one. And also we have a crochet hook. Well, I don't need it, but if you don't crochet and you want to do like the little edges of your project with a little bit of crochet, then you have a 3.75 millimeters crochet hook included. So I'm going to take one of the yarns that I got and actually they do pull out from the center. So that's really fun and it's going to be useful because I know that we have to pull a little bit of yarn before rotating the handle. I'm still learning all the terms, so bear with me. <laughs> I still have to kind of watch probably a couple of videos to learn the terms. I think they call it hunk or rank. Crank? <laughs> Is it crank? I think it's crank. I've heard some people saying cranking when you like rotate it and you use the handle. So yeah, <laughs> we're still learning the terms as well. So that's fine. So after reading the instructions, I know that we have to keep the white needle just a little bit to the right of your yarn guide. This is the yarn guide. It's going to guide your yarn down to the tension that is at the bottom. So you have to keep it to the right side. So we are going to be starting to add the yarn into the very first needle. That's the first hook right there. If you have any numbers in there, just press the button to reset your machine. So you want to leave about 15 to 20 centimeters here first as a little end for the weave-in later and you want to place it right into the center of your machine. And also you want to make sure that if you want to work in a tube that the switch is down into tube and not panel. And then now we can start adding the yarn around the hooks. So you're gonna go around the very first hook. So just hook that in. So just one more time, take your yarn and hook it around the very first hook, hook number one. You see there is a little number right at the back of the hook, right inside it. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. The white one is the last one, number 48. So now we want to do zigzag motions going around the hooks and hooking the yarn around it. So we do the very first round. Now we are going to be cranking as well. So you're going to go. So you, you hooked the first one. So you're going to go around the back of the second and then you're going to hook the third, go around the back of the fourth and hook the fifth around the back of the next one. And then you're going to be repeating that all the way around. So we got into the hook number 48, this one, as you can see. So we are going to just go around it. Continue rotating your handle. So you're just gonna crank it until the white hook, it's past the yarn guide. You can see the yarn is already kind of going to hook the, the first one, but you don't want that to happen. First, we want to pass the yarn through the yarn guide. So you're just going to insert it like so. So here we have the instructions for the tension. So we have tight, moderate, loose and the tightest for very thin yarns. So the tight you are going to be using for maybe yarns number two, sports weight, and then the moderate you're going to be using for DK and Aran worsted yarns, and then the loose one you are going to be using for chunky yarns, and then the, the last one you are going to be using for the tightest for very very th thin yarns. I'm going to be just placing into 
the middle little hole. So you can see, you can just like push it in, just like so, pretty simple. And then if you are using like a larger yarn, you're gonna place it into the third and a thinner into the first one. And now if you wanna do the tie test, then you're gonna go through the first one and then going around the back here through the second and then around the top through the third one. So this is going to be the tightest for very thin yarns. You can see how it runs really, really slowly. So that's going to make the knitting really, really tight. So I'm just gonna go through the second like so. Also, you wanna make sure that you pull a little bit of yarn before you crank it, cause you don't wanna break your machine. You wanna make sure that you, the yarn is really, really nice and loose. So it runs really smoothly around the machine. So yeah, make sure you do that. From here, you have to just continue cranking and like rotating your handle. I think that should be, oh my goodness. I think it's actually working. I thought it wasn't going to work because now all of them, they are just hooked. It's not going like around it. I thought I did something wrong, but actually I think I did all fine. Okay. I'm just gonna do maybe 20 rounds here. So we have an idea of how it looks like. And so we have more uh, rounds to just see how it looks, the, st the stitches. We are on round number seven. That was the quickest thing ever. That is so incredible. Look at this yarn. No way. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh my goodness. So I've decided, so I'm going to be making a beanie as my first project, but also I'm going to try to add the top that I want to do also in today's video, kind of just like a speed up kind of process of making the top because I really, really want to try to make the top because then I can actually know how the machine works and how to do panels and tubes. So it's kind of like a two-in-one learning process. And for the beanie, I'm going to be using the colors, the yarn, that I actually got with the machine because this is a pretty nice and soft yarn. I really like it. And I'm going to attempt changing colors. And for what I've seen online, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to attempt also in today's video so you know how to change colors if you wanna learn that as well. So I'm going to show you how to change into a different color now. So you wanna make sure that number 48 is on the right side and one it's on the left side of our guide. And then we are going to be removing the yarn from the tension. And now, with this yarn, we are going to be removing from the guide and we are going to leave it going around and hooked into number 48. Oopsie. Just make sure that that's hooked and into the center of your knitting machine. So just leave it in the center. So you wanna make sure that the new yarn is on the left side of your machine. You can leave the tail here as long as you want. I'm just gonna place it right in the center of the machine. And I'm going to place my new yarn, my new collar into the guide, just pushing it in, into the guide like so. And then I'm going to add into the tension. I'm going to be doing the same one and if this is too tight, in which is probably a little bit too tight, I might use the third tension. I think this is better. So you want to go slowly and kind of holding the two ends here before you continue. So hold it and now you're going to continue cranking. Just go slowly for a couple of stitches. And then once that's done, you can just work normally. 
going around when you get to kind of this section and just continue because you don't want it dropping off the hook just want to make sure that's that that's really nice there if you want you can make a knot i i would make a knot here I'm, i haven't seen people doing it but just to make sure that this is not going to undo and now i'm going to continue with my new collar how easy that is hopefully you you understood that was me learning for the first time as well changing colors so yeah it's pretty simple if you want you can just go back and re-watch what i've done but it's pretty pretty easy and i think i'm going to keep into the third tension here because this is a thicker yarn so we are going to be having a very very different um textured <laughs> beanie like with a probably dk yarn and then worsted but it's okay so for the beanie that i want to do that it's like double layered we have to do a minimum of 100 rounds so that's what i'm gonna do for my very first project and what i'm gonna do it's basically what i've just showed it to you just changing colors once i run out of yarn and i'm going to continue crunking and crunking <laughs> That word is so funny. Until I have 100 rows. I'm on row 38 right now. So as you can see, I have reached now 100 rows, rounds, rows in total for the beanie that I'm planning on doing. I did drop, my goodness, many stitches on the way. So now I think I know what people mean when using chunky yarn with this machine. I think it's just because it drops a lot of the stitches. And I did notice at the beginning that the first yarn was already different from the second and the third that I've added, the blue one, was actually the same thickness as the second yarn. And then this one, it's actually the same thickness as the first one that I've used. It did work, but the second yarn was dropping a lot, the third one as well. So I did manage to figure it out how to put it back. Maybe I can share that in a different video for you guys how to kind of um, fix when you drop stitches. You can just like follow uh, the pattern of the knitting machine and then you can just place back on the hook, but it's pretty difficult. Um, if you drop, you might have to start again if you want a nice and clean finish until kind of you get used to it. Cause actually this was just for me to kind of get used to it. Now I know that I might have to use a DK yarn from now on, I'm not gonna be using, prob probably I'm not gonna be using worsted or chunky yarns with this machine. So now we have to cast off and I have to read that because I don't know how to cast off. So it's saying that we have to cut about 45 centimeters of yarn. I'm going to measure about 45 to 50. I'm gonna do 50 centimeters. There we go. And I'm going to just check how much that is going around my machine. So 45, 50 centimeters going around my machine is about that much. So it goes up to here, but I think we should do one entire round. So I'm gonna go from here around my hooks. So just like so going around and now I'm going to cut that much remove from the tension so we are going to now remove from the guide and we want to make sure that this yarn is going around the hook number 48 
Oh yeah, before we even remove it, you wanna make sure that the pin here, 48, it's going past the guide, just like this. I forgot to mention that. So now we just leave the yarn going around peg, here the little hook, 48. And we wanna leave all the end that we have cut inside the center of the machine, okay? So now we have to, so now we have to do one round with the pin like this, just to lock it in place, I think. And you wanna do this very, very slowly. What did I do? Was it meant to do that? It's not going around, so I think it's meant to be like this. So continue, go slowly. You will see that your yarn is going to stay here and it's gonna go all the way around to the other side. Oh my goodness, that is so scary. So when the yarn, it's getting towards the beginning again, you wanna make sure that the white hook goes past the yarn guide just as we have started. And that one just dropped. We have to catch that one that just dropped. I don't know what happened, but the stitches dropped from number one and two here. I'm not sure why, maybe because the yarn is too thick, as I have mentioned. So I'm not sure what happened there. So I'm going to now grab the yarn that it's in the center, the one here at the top, and I'm going to thread that into my tapestry needle. I'm using here the longest one. So now all you have to do is to go through the very first hook, and then you wanna remove that. I'm gonna hold the second one just making sure that it's not going to come off. And I'm gonna go through that, just like this. And, <laughs> and then I'm gonna go through the second hook, as you can see, and I'm gonna get the loop, and I'm gonna sew that in, just like this. And it's basically going to stay inside the thread that you have here at the top and is going to already release your work from the machine. So just repeat that, go through the next loop. And then remove from the little hook. So keep on repeating the same step until you reach hook number 48. So I'm here into hook number 48 and you just want to go through that and then remove it from the hook. And now, believe it or not, I am done with my 100 and <laughs> one including the cast off rounds. This side, it's so nice, look at this. But then this side, we have a big mistake right there that I've tried to fix the stitch and I did the opposite way instead of doing the right way. So I'm going to now show you how to close the beanie. So now to finish the beanie, you have to simply just pull this yarn until they are all gathered together. So you're just gonna pull, pull, pull. Make sure that you don't pull too tight because you don't wanna break the yarn. So this is what you want. And now you wanna do the same to the other side. You wanna get the yarn that it's right into the base of your project. And then you wanna pull, pull, pull until everything is gathered together. And now you will have something like this and we just have to secure both sides. So I'm going to show you how to do that and you will be doing that with your yarn needle. Just like sewing around and locking this yarn in place. I'm going to cut a little bit of this yarn and then I'm gonna be using the other yarn needle that I have. And you are simply going to 
go back and forth into the center just to secure this in place just so that is not going to be opening when we do the next section because we are going to be kind of folding the beanie together you can do as many as you want and then when you are done just choose one little stitch and then you're gonna leave a little loop here you're gonna go through the loop to fasten that off and if you want you can just hide this yarn inside the beanie and just leave it inside the beanie like so or you can just weave in as you wish and now you can repeat the same to the other side so just make sure that you leave one of the sides with the yarn if you want to attach both sides together when folding the beanie because we are doing a double layer beanie how fancy is this so now to fold it's pretty simple you're just gonna choose one of the ends and you're gonna go through the inside of the beanie reaching the other end so just open and you're just gonna move to the other side through the inside of the beanie like this and the beanie is going to be super thick and super warm i cannot wait to wear this outside <laughs> so now to attach both sides together you're gonna go through the top where you have the yarn and then you will try to find the other side here inside the beanie as you can see the center of the other side just push the needle through like so and now you want to just go back and forth securing the two together and then once you are happy just find one little stitch go through that twice and then a third time leaving a little loop going through the loop and now we can just hide this yarn inside the beanie making sure that it's not gonna not going through the other side and then we can just cut off this yarn so the beanie is done it's now time to try it on so i think we have two different ways here maybe the first one we can just fold it and then wear it folded at the top no way this is just perfect this is super warm this is going to be the perfect winter beanie i look at it how does it look the back the front the side it's without folding it because that's how i want to wear it so let's goodness so it's gonna look like this because you can fold it now if you want but i like it a little bit slouchy i just fold here at the back let me show you so i fold once like this and another fold at the top of the other fold so i just do it like so <gasps> it looks so good let me know in the comments oh my goodness let me know in the comments how it looks because i'm so excited this was not planned and it looks like this so i would say that you can do the first color the color that you want at the top of the beanie and then the second color that you do you want to do in the middle and then the third color in which is going to be on the other side of the top it's basically for the top on the other side inside the beanie so yeah this is exactly what you want to do <laughs> this was perfect love this i'm going to make more good morning it's the next day after finishing yesterday 12 a.m my beanie loved it so so much oh my goodness i'm so happy with it and i did show to everyone in my family and now everyone wants one so i don't think that was a good idea but that's going to be a very good excuse for me to use all of my yarns the ones that i have at home probably everyone is getting a beanie this christmas so yeah i'm happy with that and i think they will be too <laughs> so the learning process is not finished 
until we try every single thing that we can do with this machine. I wanted in this video to learn how to work in rounds and also the panel setting as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I want to do a panel project. So the idea here is to actually make a top. I really want to do this top that I have in mind for a very, very long time, even before buying a knitting machine. The style for this top, it's going to be like a band for the bust area in which I don't know if I want to do twisted at the, at the front here or it's just going to be bunched up at the front. And then it's going to be another panel at the bottom so we add the length for the top and then it's going to be kind of open here and then I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it but I want to try adding sleeves. I know this is going to be extreme for a beginner but I really want to test this out because I have this design in mind that I want to do so I'm going to try so hopefully I can do all that that I'm thinking of so this is the yarn I'm going to be using to test out this top pattern that I want to do this is a DK yarn 100% acrylic and I'm using orange and green super colorful and super summery so yeah so first we are going to learn how to do the panel so I'm going to show you and then from there I'm going to let you know how many panels I did for this top and then I'm going to share with you the measurements and also um, how many stitches I did and everything so you know everything and also measuring around my body and things like that so you can also make one for yourself if you want to test it out as well so the first thing you want to do is to switch from tube to panel that is very very important and you will see that you're not going to be able to rotate all the way around anymore so it's going to stop into peg number two so it's going to stop here because we are going to be working in rows now going back and forth so it's not going to be rotating anymore and don't force your machine to go around because it's not going to go and you're going to break your machine so yeah so i'm going to be starting with the orange so as you can see i'm here into peg number 48 and i have number one on the left side and number 47 on the right side and if I rotate forward if I rotate it normally it's going to stop into peg number two so it's not going to continue because we are now working in the panel setting so you want to rotate backwards all the way around until it stops again So here is number 48, 1 and 47. So you see that it stopped right into peg number 48. So from here you are going to rotate forward and that's going to keep your work really nice and tidy because then we know that we have to stop here and then start again. So you want to basically begin your work and casting on when peg number 48 it's aligned with here our guide and is not moving any further than that so you want to begin right here so we can now begin with the casting on so you're going to cast on exactly the same way that you did with the tube setting so I'm going to put my yarn on the left side the end in the center of the machine leave a little tail depending on what you're doing you want to leave more or less and then you're going to go around hook 48, the white hook. So now you're going to rotate the handle forward until you get to hook number three. And if you have that problem when you cranking and at the beginning here, the stitches, they drop, then what you're going to do, you are going to be wrapping the working yarn around this hook like so. Just wrap it, oopsie, you got caught there. Just wrap it around like so. I'm going to show you in a different angle so you can see. So instead of continuing, you are going to be just wrapping the yarn around the hook like so. And now you can continue with the cast on. So through the back, as you would cast on, but instead of continuing, you're just going to be wrapping around and now you can continue. Hopefully you got that. So 
wrapping the yarn around hook number three before you continue. So now also don't make this too tight because when you come back you want that a little bit loose. And now you can just continue and cast on as many stitches as you want. I'm going to be doing 26 in total for this very first panel. And you want that your yarn it's going at the back of the stitch that you're going to continue backwards now. So I'm going to do hook number 27 so that my yarn is going around the back of the hook. And now you want to move this hook to the right side of the yarn guide. And now you're going to insert into the yarn guide. and also through the tension that you want. I'm doing the very first one. So you want to just hold the yarn a little tight here and we are going to rotate the handle backwards. You want to do the very first row here a little bit slower than all the others just so that we get the stitches nicely and also if you need to add a little bit of tension with your hands you can as well. So you want to go back all the way until you reach the hook 48 here. When you get to number three, you'll see that it's just gonna work normally. So go all the way to 48. And now you are going to crank forward. So rotate the handle forward so you can go back. And then I'm going to show you what you have to do here at the beginning. So go all the way to hook three. So rotating forward. So here is number three. Make it a little tight. And now let me show you what you're gonna do here. So when you get to this area, you just wanna release the end here of all the hooks. So all the hooks, 48, one and two, and just leave exactly as it is here. You see that the yarn at the end here is going through the inside of this little loop. And by doing the little wrapping around this number three here, it's going to make a little knot and you see that the finishing on this side is going to be really nice and exactly the same as the other side. So now from here, you can just go back and forth, back and forth, cranking and doing as many rows as you want for the very first panel or for the panel that you are doing. You will see that it's going to make a little knot. If you want, you can tighten a little bit this end, but it's going to be so nice and secure here. If you have the dropping problem at the beginning here, this is going to save your life. So I'm rotating forward now. And now I'm going to show you what you have to do when you get to the end. So here's hook number 27. You want to make sure that it's really nice and aligned with here, the guide. And what we have to do, we have to go and crank two and a half stitches because we do lose two stitches at the end here when we go back. So if you want, you can place a little tape here. So I'm going to do that just so you can see what I'm doing. When I say two and a half, I'm counting the little bumps. I call these little bumps. <laughs> so you're going to count one, two stitches and then into the next bump available here. I'm going to just add this little tape into here. We have to return. Continue cranking forward. So one stitch, just want to make sure that it's not going to ruin anything. And then two stitches and a half in which is the little bump. So when the bump, you can see here the tape, it's leveled with the guide, then you can go back. So now you're going to crank back. See, we lost those two stitches there and now it's back to hook 27. And now you can just rotate back all the way to, oopsie, 
what happened there to 48 and now we go back you can see that we made a little knot there so it's not going anywhere it's really nice and tidy and now I'm going to rotate forward until I reach my last hook 27 and now we do the same as we did before so we count one two and a half into the bumpy that I, I told you guys that I put the tape and now we rotate back all the way to the other side so this is the finishing that you have here at the beginning as you can see really nice and tidy you have a little knot here instead of like a very loose stitch as i had when i was trying it out i was having so much trouble before the stitches were so so loose at the beginning and i couldn't figure it out until i just had this idea of wrapping around into the third hook so if you are having that trouble at the beginning then just do what i have mentioned and you're good to go so i'm going to now continue doing the panel until i have as many rows as i need and then i will be back to show you how to cast off as a panel So I think I got to the sizing of the very first panel that I need for my top in which is the bust area. So you want to take your bust area for this very first panel. Mine is 90 centimeters and I did what I basically did. I measured from the beginning here. I pulled a little bit. So I basically took away 10 centimeters for the front here because you want I want to do something different at, at the front so I just measured 80 centimeters so you want to do that take your bust measurement minus 10 centimeters and then that it's basically the very first panel you want to do also when you're measuring as I have mentioned you want to just pull a little bit because the panel does stretch quite a bit and now I have to talk about how you're going to know the width of your project because the length, it's pretty easy because you can just measure from here roughly the sizing that you will need just by pulling a little bit and that will give more or less the sizing that you will need to go around your body but now the length is a little bit more difficult because you don't know and the sizing that you have in the machine going around is not really the sizing that you're that your work is going to turn into so what you're gonna do you will do a little swatch and you will just check the sizing that you have to do for example I did with another yarn and this is the sizing that I got so I did a couple of testings and I got to the sizing that I wanted that's why I did 26 27 stitches uh, for the width and this is the sizing that I that I got at the end that I wanted to cover my breast. So you wanna just, that first measurement, you want just to measure from underneath your breast going around to where you want the, the top to stop. I did kind of underneath my armpit. So that is the very first panel you wanna do. And then the length is going to be, that goes around the body, is going to be the bust circumference. So that's basically, <laughs> what I did for the very what I've calculated in my head for the very first panel and it's basically the same method that I use for crochet this is exactly what I do I just do a chain check the measurement the second panel is going to be very similar you're going to have to test the width that you want and then the length is going to be under bust circumference so I'll get to that in a minute but now let me show you how to cast off your panels pretty easy as well so when casting off, you want to make sure that your work is on the left side. So you can see that the white hook is not going 
over the feeder right here. You're going to remove first from the tension in the yarn feeder right here. And then you are going to be removing from hook 48, one and two. You want to remove it from those three hooks, the yarn. If you need to move a little bit the hooks, so you can remove the yarn from there. So removed the yarn and now you want to cut the sizing that you need. Usually you can just measure your work by going around the little bumps here. Just measure going around like this and then you can cut off that size or a little bit more. So I'm going to cut just a little bit more. There we go. And now you want to leave this end inside the machine. And now we are going to rotate forward until all the work is on the right side. Go very slowly. So just rotate to the other side, forward, go quite slowly. You don't want to lose any stitches here. Once your work is on the other side, as you can see, all the hooks are down. We can now start to pick up all the stitches from here. So I'm going to thread the end here at the top into a tapestry needle. So go into the first stitch right here, pick it up, go into the next one, pick it up, following one and pick it up and then just repeat that all the way around. So I got into my last one, pick that up, and the very first panel is completed! Oh my goodness! I know that this video is probably two hours long, but I hope you are enjoying this process with me of learning this new craft, so yeah. And if you want, feel free to subscribe so you can see more of my face. <laughs> yeah, let's just see if that fits me. Just putting around it like so. Oh my God, that is perfect. All right, so my idea, we are going to have to figure the curling later. So this is going to cover my bust like this. And then I want to bunch just to put this end all together and it's going to just cover the bust like this and it's all going to be nice and straight all the way around and then the bottom section is going to be sewn here on the side and just going around my under bust circumference and we are going to have like the opening here at the front so it's going to be really cute I think it's actually going to be exactly how I imagine hopefully I can do the bunching here at the front as I want. So we have the bust, we need the under bust circumference. So what you can do, you can use this exact panel to know the other panels, the sizing for the other panels. So you basically just gonna put exactly where you need the other one to go. So I'll need the bottom one to be a little bit tighter. I can see that I need to make a little bit smaller. So like this. So I'm going to then measure from here to here and then I'm going to make the next panel this size. And then you also will want to check the length as well, the width when doing in the machine to see if you want to do a little bit shorter or a little bit longer or as a dress. I think I'm going to be doing a little bit smaller than this. For what I've counted is about 17 to 18 stitches that I'm gonna have to do for the bottom section for the bottom panel and then the sizing is going to be under bust circumference 78 centimeters so I'm I'm also going to be taking away probably around 10 5 to 10 centimeters because we have the stretch so yeah keep that in mind as well enjoy the time lapse and I'll see you once I have the next panel completed.
for the green panel in which is the under bust I did 19 stitches in the machine and then I did the amount of rows that I needed to go around my bust area in which I minus 10 centimeters because we have the stretch and I'm going to show you it fits perfectly around my under bust there we go For the sleeves, I did the entire machine of stitches. So minus the ones that doesn't catch at the beginning and at the end. So I did the entire machine going back and forth as a panel. And then I did 47 rows down. I had to count actually because I have two sleeves. The other one is cooling right here. And it's measuring now that I did steam block it it's measuring 27 centimeters. It's going to go from one side to the other and then we are going to be having the other side that I already fixed as well. So it's the bottom of the sleeves. So it's going to be something like this. And for the sleeves, what I did, I just put around my body like this, around my shoulder, and then I measured about 40 centimeters because that's the sizing that I wanted from front to back. And to know how many stitches I had to cast on, I measured this one. And then I just calculated how many stitches I needed to get to 40 centimeters. So that's something that you have to calculate and do for yourself to know exactly how many stitches you have to cast on. So you have the sizing that you need for the sleeves and then the length you can just decide as big as you want. So now the next thing that we have to do is to add the finishing on both sides of each panel. So if you can see here, it's all messy and uneven. We have the little loops, the running yarn here. So we just need to add the finishing detail on that. So I did it already on this other one and it looks really good. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then also we have to steam block each piece. And I'm going to be using my four millimeters crochet hook and two stitch markers. So here on the side, you will find the yarn. So you have to do the finishing detail on the opposite side. So I'm going to be flipping my work. So I have the right side facing me for this side. And I'm going to be starting on this side that I don't have the end. So you are simply going to be using the little loops that you have. And you're going to slip stitch them all together. So find two stitches here in the corner. There we go. And then you're going to be finding the very first loop that is going around and into this thread. If you pull the thread, you will see that it's running through all the loops. So just find the very first one. I have one here. And then you're gonna get that loop and you're going to move through the previous loop that you have on the hook. So find the next one. The next one is right here. There we go. And then you're going to be moving that through the loop you have on the hook. If you just find the yarn that is going through into the loops, you can just move it around and you will find the little loop. It's right here. So find the next one, slip stitch. So now you're just going to be repeating that all the way across until you have covered all the little loops that you have going across this side. So when you get right at the end, you're just gonna find one little 
loop right at the end and then slip stitch if you find any loose yarn at the end any little loose loops just slip stitch with the last one and then we are going to be adding a stitch marker into this loop so it's not going to unravel and undo everything that we just did so this is how the finishing looks like and now all you have to do is to repeat the same steps to the other side so you're going to be doing and starting where you don't have the yarn so here's the end so do on the opposite side find the very first loop go into the second and slip stitch and now you can just slip stitch all the way down and then at the end just slip stitch any last loops you have and then add the stitch marker the second one into that last loop and now the next step is to steam block the panel so that is not as curly as it is now so now i'm going to be using some pins and my steamer if you don't have a steamer you can also use your iron just make sure that the steam option it's pressed because then you can use the steam to block your project if you don't have those foams that are super fancy to block your projects you can just lay a towel on top of a table like i am doing now and then you can just pin your project onto the towel it's going to work the same as well so you want to make sure that you have your work here with the reverse facing up because that's where it curls and you are going to be pinning exactly the sizing that you want this to be So once you've done that, you can now steam all this. Make sure that you focus on the sides because that's the curlier part. So just make sure that you focus on that first. So once you've done this section, we have to now let it cool completely to move on into the other section. And once you remove the pins, it's going to look like this. So it's not going to be as curly as before. Nice and cool now. I'm going to remove all the pins. I'm just going to fold it like this just so it finishes cooling down a little bit more and then I'm going to steam block the rest so I have finished steam blocking the orange panel and then you're going to be repeating the same to all the others so I have all of my panels now ready and we can now, I cannot even believe, but we can now start putting this top together. So I'm going to be starting with the orange piece because this is the one that's going to go around the bust area. And then after we are going to be adding the green and then the last two things we are going to be doing will be the sleeves. So yeah. Oh my god, I'm so excited! So, orange piece first. We are first going to be adding single crochets on top and bottom of the panel. And we are going to be doing the single crochet on the right side of the project. You can see here, this is the right side and this is the reverse. And I'm going to be using the same color as my panel. And my 4 millimeters crochet hook, if I can find it. I'm going to be starting with a slip knot and I'm going to be attaching right here at the beginning. So first you want to go through the loop that it's 
with the stitch marker so we secure this loop in place make sure that the end is out of the way we are going to weave in this later and then from here we can start with the single crochet so if you just see here we have some stitches so we are going to be using these little stitches that we have on the side and we are going to single crochet so find the very first any space here at the beginning pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all the loops so here's going to be the first stitch if you want you can place a stitch marker here and now you're just going to find little gaps and you're going to single crochet across to the other side the sides of the panel is going to be the front of the top so we are going to be doing some little loops here so i'm getting towards the end just continuing with my single crochets and then once you get into one of the sides where we did the finishing of the cast off then we are just going to be doing some loops here so i'm going to chain three and then kind of skipping one and slip stitching into the next just creating some little loops here at the front just so that we can add a little lace up so chain three skip one stitch any one little gap you have and then slip stitch into a next little gap so it's going to make some little loops here at the front and then I'm going to repeat this all the way down here at the front so when you get towards the end I'm making here my last loop so I did one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven now I want to get that little loop that it's into the stitch marker so we secure that in place so there we go now the end we are going to weave that in later and now you can just single crochet on the other side here so i'm just going to do single crochets as well here on the opposite side across so single crochet and now single crochet all the way down so i'm going to single crochet all the way down and then i'm going to be doing the little loops as well on the other side where we did the finishing as well so now i got here on the other side of the front i'm going to also do the little loops so chaining three skipping one and slip stitching into a next stitch and then just repeat that all the way down so now my last loop 11 and now you want to slip stitch into the very first single crochet you did so i'm going to remove my stitch marker and now just slip stitch into the first single crochet i'm going to chain one cut off my yarn and i'm going to weave in all of the ends that i have here So now here is the orange panel completed this is how it looks like just double checking if it's fitting properly <laughs> before continuing all right that looks good nice so now we have to do the tying for the ruching here at the top so i'm going to be doing with the yellow so i'm going to be doing a slip knot and then I'm going to be starting my chain and you can do the chain as long as you want this chain has to go around like so and then tying a little bow at the top or at the bottom is really completely up to you so my chain has 53 centimeters 
then you can just cut off a little bit here and you can fasten off. I'm going to cut just a tiny bit more and then I'm going to leave this little tail right there. So now my little chain detailing is completed. So to add the tying, you're going to fold as you want the top. So the opening at the front. And now you're going to be adding the tying like so. So here's how it looks like. Then you can just add as many ruching as you want to tie at the top or the bottom. I'm going to be working on the green panel. So I'm going to be having it on the right side as well. I'm going to single crochet all the way across exactly the same I did with the orange piece. So I finished the single crochets at the top. Now you have two options here. You can join the two sides together, right sides facing, and then sew it down and then single crochet around it to create a little tube. So you can do that or you can fasten off here, do the other side of single crochets and then you can join the two sides later. So that's what I'm going to do because I want to do the sewing of both sides with my tapestry needle. So I'm going to cut off the yarn here, fasten off, and then I'm going to just turn and I'm going to single crochet the other side, the opposite side. I'm going to be moving one of these ends that I have here through the little loop that we did the finishing just so that we secure that in place and then from here you can just weave it in. So as you can see I just left one end so that now we can close it off. So I'm going to pass as well this and through the little loop that we have here to secure that in place before we continue. We are going to be doing the sewing on the right side. So you're going to be flipping your work with the wrong side facing up and then just join the two ends like so. And now you can just sew this down. So I'm going to find one stitch here on the opposite side. Sew that down. And then I'm going to go through two stitches at the beginning here just to lock the top here in place. And now I'm just going to find stitches and go down sewing the two sides together. So sewing done, I'm going to now fasten off and weave this yarn in here at the back. So here's the tube that is going to go around the underbust. Maybe we should try the green on as well. All right, this is looking good as well. Really nice and fitting. I will keep it on because I have to try with the orange so we know where to sew. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to try with the bow at the top and then see if I like it, otherwise I can just flip. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. Oh my goodness. That is cute. So now we have to 
mark a couple of stitches down. So we are going to be sewing at the back of the top, joining the top with the bottom, just at the back. I'm going to leave the opening here because this was the original idea in which I really like. I'm going to be adding a stitch marker around this area just to mark this section down so I know that I have to sew from here going around the back to the other side. So just roughly the same on the other side. I think this is good, I think that's even. So now I have to measure the chain that I'm doing here for the strap. So it's about 37 centimeters. So we want to make the strap 37 centimeters, including the stretch. So just kind of follow your bra and mark that stitch down. Same on the other side. And then you have to do that at the back as well. So I'm going to turn the entire top. You're gonna mark two stitches here at the back as well. There we go. <laughs> so this is what we have now. So we have to do first the sewing of the two panels. So I'm going to be sewing from this stitch marker all the way around just the back to the other stitch marker. We have the single crochets on both panels, so it will be super, super simple to do this sewing. I'm going to be starting here and then going around. So go through both stitches that you have the stitch marker on. You wanna leave a little tail for the weave-in here at the beginning. And then we make a knot first. And now we can begin the sewing. So when you get back into the other stitch marker, so I'm going to remove the stitch marker. I'm gonna go through the two last stitches. Just go through that one more time, leaving a little loop, going through the loop to fasten off. Now I can take this yarn to the back and I can weave in the two ends. So I wanted to show you because I've tried the top again because I wanted to check the strap and look at it. So cute, the strap, perfect. So I'm going to show you how I did this. And now that I've tried it on again, I think I might wanna close a little bit more here at the front. I can check the stitches later. But yeah, I think this is a lot cuter than before. The back is so perfect. Look at this. I cannot believe that I did all this with a knitting machine and we still have the best part yet to come, the sleeves. I cannot even believe. I'm so excited about this. So yeah, I'm gonna close a little bit and then show you how to make the little strap. Pretty simple. We are going to be starting here at the front then you're gonna take your yarn, make a slip knot, and then you're going to be attaching into the stitch where you have the stitch marker. Attach with a single crochet. The single crochet is going to count as a very first chain stitch. And now for my strap, I did a chain of 40. So that's what I'm going to do. The single crochet counts as one, so I'm going to be doing 39 chains. So I have here a chain of 40. So now I'm going to take my chain to the back and I'm going to single crochet here at the back into the back stitch marker. So single crochet into that one. 
going to remove the stitch marker. So now, if you want, you can do another single crochet into the same stitch. So that's what I did the other one. Now I'm going to turn here my chain, make sure that it's on the right side. And now I'm going to single crochet back into my chain. Going to the very first one, single crochet, next chain, single crochet, and then repeat that all the way to the beginning again of the chain. So just single crochet all the way around. So when you get back, make sure that you get just a little stitch of that single crochet and then you're going to single crochet into that and then slip stitch into the same stitch that you have started. Just like that. Now chain one, cut off a little tail for the weave in, fasten off and now we can weave in the two ends that we have here. So once you are done with one, go ahead and do the same to the other side. And now if you want, you can actually keep the top like this. It looks so cute. Look at it. I love it. Now, if you want to take your top to the next level, we are going to be adding the sleeves. Now I'm going to work on the sleeves. So now for the sleeves, make sure that the nicer side is facing up. We are just going to be putting the sides together and we are going to be sewing this close. So this part here is going to be around the arms and this is going to be around the shoulder. So you can choose one of the yarns that you have here. If you don't have one of them, you can just attach a new yarn. I'm going to be using this one. So when you get at the top, just fasten off and you can weave in this yarn. So now we can turn inside out. So we have the nicer side on the outside. So I have one sleeve already attached in place and this is how it looks like. So I'm going to be doing the other one, this one with you guys. So first we have to do something here going around the raw edge so we are just going to be adding some single crochets all the way around into the little loops that we have so with the yellow yarn the same color as you did the sleeve make a slip knot and you can choose any stitch to begin so find one little loop there we go and then into that you're going to pull up a loop and then single crochet. So now find the next one, pull up a loop and single crochet. So into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. By doing this, it's not going to remove the stretchiness of this part of the, the sleeves. So that's why you want to do single crochets. When you get into the sewing section, just do some single crochets here. So you can go to the other side and then find the following little loop and single crochet. You can see that we don't lose the stretchiness. So when you're getting towards the end, just keep on grabbing the little loops and making single crochets. Here I'm just gonna make one single crochet in between the two that we made, the last one and the first one, just so that we cover this little gap that we have. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the very first one. And now you can see that it's really nice and stretchy. So you want that. So I'm going to 
chain one and leave enough yarn for the sewing. So you want to go around the base here three times and that is going to be enough yarn for the sewing. So one, two and three. Cut that off and now you can fasten off. If you want, you can weave in the shorter end. So now you want to match the sleeves with the strap. So we are matching around and also the armpit section right here. So I'm just going to open it up like this now. So you want to get the sewing and you want to match right in the middle of the armpit section. So we can pin here down. You can just stretch a little bit here. So I'm going to pin here down and then I'm going to be pinning here as well, close to the strap and on the other side. So now you're going to be matching the middle, the top middle of the sleeve with the center top of the strap here. And you're going to pin that down as well. And now we can start sewing. So because my yarn is here, I'm going to start the sewing here where I have the strap. So when doing the strap, you want to make sure that the strap is not twisted. I did twist it here. So I'm just going to untwist and pin that in place. So it's going to be pretty simple because you have stitches on both the sleeves and strap. So you're just going to go into one stitch of this, the sleeve and one of the strap. You can just choose any and then you can start sewing. So go into the next two like so and sew them together. And here you might not have the same amount of stitches, so you might have to skip a couple. So just so as you have to in this section, you just want to make sure that this side covers all these stitches on the sleeve and on this other side, all this is covered when sewing. So now just go around sewing both together and then I'll meet you right at the end. So I am done with the sewing of the sleeve into the strap. So I'm just going to fasten off, take this yarn to the back and weave in. And we are basically done with the top. So I'm going to finish the weave in and then I'm going to show you the grand review of this top. So the top is now completed. Are you ready? cannot stop looking at it. It's so beautiful. I did tuck inside my shorts, but you can just wear like this as well. And it looks so cute. I made this with a knitting machine. I cannot believe it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I am so in love with this top. I cannot believe that I made it. As my very, oh well, not my very first, it's my very first panel knitting machine project. And if I made it as a beginner, you can make it too. Because it is a little bit 
see-through, I am wearing one of these just in this area to cover, you know, the privates. <laughs> so you can also attach the padding in place as well, just by sewing the edges and the little corners into your top and you basically don't need a bra. How incredible is this? You have to get some of these because they are so, so useful for knitting and crochet projects because, you know, usually they are a little bit see-through because of the little holes. So this helps a lot. And I cannot even believe that I actually made two projects in one video. We have a beanie and a top right now. Made with my knitting machine. I'm so excited, everyone. I'm all over the place as always. When I finish a project, you know how I am. I get super excited. I just wanna dance and smile and like be funny. And <laughs> come here, Lana. What do you think of mommy's new top? Yeah. <laughs> so now for the final thoughts of this journey, cause it was actually a journey doing these two projects. So I loved it loved 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 so so much doing this and i cannot just stop right here i have to make some other things it was super easy to learn uh the circular knitting was the easiest ever i did drop a few stitches but i think that's because of the yarn because when i was using this yarn i didn't drop any stitch so it was definitely the yarn. When working with the panels, that was the harder part because I was dropping some stitches at the beginning and I didn't know why, then I fixed it. Once that was fixed, it was good to go. And I just did all the panels so, so quick. And it was the easiest thing ever. I thought I was going to have more trouble with the panels as I know that most people do, but it was so easy at the end once I managed to get the beginning and the end right. So if you follow what I showed you in the video, then you will be fine doing panels. Also, I loved how I did the finishing after the cast off. That was the best idea ever because it just gave the best finishing. Also here for the sleeves at the bottom, as you saw, I didn't even add any finishing, just that slip stitching finishing. Um, after the cast off and it was perfect. So if you are doing like jumpers or tops, skirts, shorts, pants, you can actually just do this and you will have the finishing that you need. Also, I was so scared when removing the panel from the machine and it was all curled. I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And then I thought of crochet that you have to actually steam block to maintain the shape. So that's what I did and it worked. And look at this, perfect, no curls. Just do that as well with your iron or your steamer. It's going to be perfect. So yeah, that was my journey and I had a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to be making some more. And let me know in the comments if you wanna see some more and what I should be making next because I have so many ideas. I just wanna start a new project right now in which I think I'm, I am going to after editing this video and i just can't wait to share more with with you guys about this journey because i am completely in love with that machine i'm so sorry crochet but i think i have a new hobby right now oh well i don't think it's a bad thing because mixing crochet and knitting you can make even more things because you can just add more to your project I know that this video was a little bit longer than expected. I was just going to be making one project and ended up making two. So yeah, I really hope you have enjoyed learning this new craft with my new knitting machine. And I'm so excited because now with this video, with this very first journey of mine with my knitting machine, I can now make so many other things because we know how to work in a tube, we know how to do panels, we know how to join, we know how things work. So from here, it's just gonna get better and better. So thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can watch more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.